So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the CSV file that we created in the last step and we're going to import it into MySQL. So all this data is going to go into a MySQL database that we create using MySQL Workbench. So let's do that first. Open up MySQL Workbench. And I actually already have a connection right here, so I'm going to delete that. Now right up here in the top left, we have a plus sign to create the connection. So let's do that. We're going to do tutorial. You can leave the host name, port, username, all this just as the defaults, don't change any of that. Press OK. Open up the tutorial connection. Right here, I actually already have the database set up, so I'm going to drop that. I'm going to delete that for now because we're going to do it. So right here in the top left, we have a button to create a new schema. Now what this is, is this is going to be the actual database that we use. So for the schema name or database name, let's type in tutorial again. For the default coalition, we're going to pick UTF-8. Um, if you remember, this was the same character set that we used, the same uh, decoding or encoding for all the characters that we use when we open up that file. So this is just going to be the default coalition. Let's save that. Keep it all the same. So apply and apply again. I'm going to click close. All right, perfect. So now we should be good to go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a package called MySQL, and you can see basically exactly what we're going to do right here. We're going to import it. We're going to create a connection with all the different parameters on how um, MySQL or how the connection needs to be formed so that we can connect to that database. Then we're going to connect to the database, and then we're going to run some queries and end the connection so that um, we have all the data in there and everything closes nicely. So let's do just that. Go back over to your terminal. Let's do code dot. I'm going to open it back up in uh, Visual Studio Code. Next thing we're going to do is import or install the MySQL package with npm. So do npm install MySQL. We can see that it's been added right here as a dependency to our package.json, so we're all good to go. Next thing we're going to do is create a separate file for this, mysql.js. And now we're going to start coding so that we can import that CSV file right here for the animate table and actually have it in the database. If you look right here in our MySQL workbench, you'll see that the database is empty. There's nothing in it, no tables, no nothing. So that's what we're going to do right here in this step and actually populate it with some data. So first thing, import the MySQL package. Next thing we're going to do is actually define what the connection needs to look like. So we're going to do mysql.create connection. And the only argument that that takes in is an object with some information on what the um, different values need to be for us to connect to that connection. So the host is going to be local host. The port is going to be 3306. The user is going to be root. And the database is going to be tutorial. Now, if you remember, this is all the stuff that we left default despite or aside from the database key that we have right here. And that was just whatever name we chose to create um, the database with. After that, we're going to create a variable for the different queries that we have. And then we're going to do db.connect, actually create a connection to the database. And the only thing that that takes in is a callback for any errors that happens. And so if there's an error, we're going to throw that error. If not, we're going to print out to the console um, that the connection was successful. So let's have that right there. This is a good place for us to save, see what's going on. So pop over back over to your terminal, do node mysql.js. And you'll see right here that the connection was successful, except the only thing that is going wrong here is this is just a hanging process. Nothing's going on. We never close the connection. You can't type anything into your terminal. It can't do anything because this is just hanging here. So let's do control C and fix that. So let's go back over to uh, the mysql.js file and run some queries. So we're going to set the value to that query variable to drop table if exists anime. What this tells MySQL is if the table exists, then we want to drop it with this name. So if the anime table exists, drop it. And the reason that we're doing this is we're going to rerun this script 
um, many, many times throughout um, the life cycle of our application. So in order to prevent any data overlap or anything that might be left over from the database when we recreate it, we want to drop everything and then reload all of the fresh new data in case we change anything or we have old rows in there that we don't want or anything like that. So next thing we're going to do is db.query. And this is going to take in the actual query and then a callback, an error function callback. And if there's an error, we're going to throw that error. And then if not, we're going to output um, a message saying that the anime table was dropped. All right, perfect. And then at the very end, we're going to do db.end. If there's any errors, then throw that error. If not, we're going to output to the console. Um, all done. Closing the database connection. All right, perfect. So let's pop on back over to our terminal. See what happens. We're going to run node mysql.js. It says that the connection was successful. We dropped the table and we're all done. So we closed the connection and now we can type back into our terminal again like usual. All right, perfect. So let's actually open MySQL Workbench one more time. Refresh the database. And wow, look at that. There's nothing there because all we did was drop the table. So let's actually write some more code that's actually going to create that table and populate it. So we're going to reset that query variable to a different statement. And this is the create table statement. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell MySQL how to create that table and all of the columns in that table. So let's do row ID int auto increment, primary key, name, varying character, 255. I'll explain the primary key at the end. Just know that name uh, var car 255 just says, hey, this column is going to be all string data. Next is we're going to do some string concatenation, skip to the next line define the rest of our column. So anime ID of type int. So it's just going to be a number. We're going to do type var car 255 because that's a string. It's going to be some letters. Episodes is int. So that's just a number. Rating is going to be a decimal because sometimes it'll be 8.5, 9.2, something like that. And then members is going to be int. All right. So right here, the first column that we said was we want you to create the row ID and auto increment that and set it as the primary key. So the reason that we have auto increment right here, what this tells MySQL is, hey, we're actually not going to pass in this uh, piece of data for you. We want you to handle that all on your own. So whenever you get to this, we want you to auto increment it by one every single time. So for instance, it's going to take in the first row and see we don't have a row ID column. So what it's going to do is say, hey, this is the first row being passed in. So let's assign the row ID to one. And then when it goes to the next row, it's going to assign the row ID to two. And then the next row three, and it's just going to add it plus one every single time. We use the primary key right here to say, hey, this column should always be unique for every single row because we want a way to access those records in the, in the table um, by some unique identifier. So think of it kind of as a social security number when um, just for people. Uh, it gives the government some type of way to uniquely identify any type of person it's looking for. And so that's the same type of um, methodology that we're going by right there. So next we're going to execute that query again. It's going to pass in the query and then have an error as a callback. So if there's an error, throw the error. If not, then let's say anime table created. All right, perfect. And then the last thing we're going to do is actually import that data from the CSV file. So let's re reset that query variable to load data, local and file. What this tells MySQL is, hey, we want you to load in a file. It's going to be local. It's going to be, you know, right on our computer. Um, and it's going to be some type of file. So we need to give it the path to that file, which is going to be CSV slash anime table dot csv so we're telling it the location of where to look for that file and we want to import it into the table called anime and the fields are going to be terminated by a comma um, so we're telling it hey this is a csv file 
you're going to parse through, whenever you reach a comma, you're gonna put whatever data was before that comma into the first column, and then when you see the second column, all of that data that um, came before it goes into the second column, and so forth. And we're going to ignore the first line because we actually have a header in our CSV file. We don't want that in the database. Uh, there's no reason for us to have that there, so that's why we're going to ignore one line. So skip to the next line, type in that plus symbol to do some string concatenation, and we're going to tell it the order in which to put all of these columns. So name, anime ID, type, episodes, rating, members. So everything is going to sync up really nicely. The order in which we have our data for our anime table file, it goes name, anime ID, type, episodes, rating, and members. So that's what we put right here. We want you to put it in the exact same order. Now, final step, we're going to do, we're going to execute that query function one more time. So pass in the query. Error is the callback. If there's an error, throw that error. If there's not, then let's type in anime table loaded. All right. So this should be a good place for us to stop. Let's test out and make sure everything is going according to plan. So node mysql.js. We get all of our nice console.log messages telling us that it was dropped, created, and loaded. So let's open up MySQL Workbench one more time. Refresh. And wow, look at that. You can see that we have the anime table now. So let's right click, go to select rows and see what's in there. Ah, uh, perfect. So we got all of the data that we needed and it's all right in here, nicely formatted. No overlap in rows. There's no extra data right here on the right. It's all right in there exactly like we wanted it to be. Okay, so that's all we need to do. But again, we're actually gonna be using this file quite a bit throughout, throughout the tutorial to make that application. So we're gonna create our own function so that we can execute queries in a really nice way in just one line and not have all of this code um, we're not going to have like so much code that looks exactly the same because if you look at all of these, they're the exact same. The only difference is, is that we output a different me a message. Wow. So um, the only thing that's different is the message. So let's create our own query or our own function that makes use of that and takes in a message as a parameter. So we're going to do function execute query. Query is the first parameter, message is the second. And this is just going to reuse that db.query function, query error. If there's an error, throw that error. If not, output the message. So as long as we execute this query and after we're done running it and on the callback there are no errors, then right after it's done, we're gonna output that message that we had. So let's get rid of this and actually make use of that function. So we're going to call execute query with the query and the message is anime table dropped. Let's get rid of this and do execute query query anime table created and then let's get rid of this for the last call and do execute query query anime table loaded. All right, perfect. So we just defined our own function within the file that we can reuse as we drop, as we write these drop, create, and uh, load data, or load, uh, load file queries. So let's run that file one more time, make sure there's no errors. Looks like everything is good to go. Um, our function is behaving exactly as we thought it would, exactly as we expected. And let's just refresh this database and make sure everything is looking good just the way that we want it. All right, perfect. So now you have an idea of how we can parse through a CSV using Papa Parse. You have an idea of how we can use MySQL to import data um, into a database, create those tables, drop those tables, and so on and so forth. So perfect. That's where we're going to end this step. And then in the next one, we're actually going to go ahead and create the front end.